but you have to learn to do things on reaction. So you do not commit needlessly. So you start stepping, and then you visually confirm my opponent did indeed attack, and he whiffed. You react to the whiff with your punishment. So this is the opposite of doing sidestep. I'm pretty sure he's gonna do something, so I'm gonna commit either way. Any tips for sidestepping? I find it really difficult. The interesting thing about sidestepping in Tekken 8 is that there are a couple of general situations you want to be on the lookout for. With every single round, your opponent has, let's just say, resources in Tekken 8. And that's going to be a heat burst, heat smash, and then eventually, when they are in rage, they will have a rage art. Unfortunately, this cannot be stepped in general. Now, Kazuya is the unique example of a low that you can actually step, although it tracks more than a hell sweep. But with all of these options, especially the heat smash, you do not want to sidestep. And this in general goes for the resource, the monumental resource we call heat. When someone is in heat, you don't really want to step them either. Look no further than Kazuya's Devil Fist. This tracks quite a bit, not as much as Jin's Demon Paw, but this devil, devil fist, when Kazi is not in heat, so when he's horny as fuck, as a motherfucker, in the neutral without heat, you can actually step this with good timing. He's so rizzed up, you know, when, when the shirt's off. I got a bit worked up. But so, uh, <laughs> proceed with the tutorial. But here's the interesting thing. When Kazi is in heat, the devil fist suddenly has additional tracking. Even if I choose to not heat dash out of it, it has more tracking now. And it's actually super fucking hard to step now. You can still do it, but chances are you're not gonna make it. So against Kazuya, when he's in heat, you actually don't really wanna step him. Because, because of the additional tracking, and because most characters when they are in heat get additional, uh, completely obscene attacks. So, a uh, general rule with sidestepping in this game is that um, when your opponent is in heat, don't try to step. Heat smashes tend to be homing in this game. Like, you don't really try to sidestep. It's a very resource-heavy game. And these resources, when they are in use, they sort of shut down, like, core Tekken gameplay, in my opinion. So the first thing I would say to a beginner with Tekken 8 when it comes to sidestepping is, as soon as your opponent is popping off with heat, you don't really sidestep, in my opinion. You hold back. And you try to look for what are they trying to accomplish with heat, what is he doing, can I beat it any other way. Uh, armor attacks, for example, are very po um, strong in this game and popular. But yeah, you, you tend to not be able to step heat smashes. And certain characters are obscene when they are in heat. For example, a character I like to play, Jin, you can't really step him. We could talk about him, but otherwise we could go to the worst uh, offending Mishima in this game. Where you're like, when do I sidestep? Well, with Reyna, uh, Electric, again, with a well-timed sidestep, you can actually step it when I dash Electric. But when I have Raiden, you can't sidestep. You can't sidestep. Raiden into mix-up. This is interesting because typically in Tekken we talk about a neutral where we can, with movement, uh, try and counterplay an option select the the attacks or a pro initiation attacks our opponent might do. Huaren got a great initiation attack in this game, which is right foot forward, down foot free. It doesn't have that much reach though. A lesser smart Huarang who is in this distance, let's say a Garyu Huarang, he'll be like, I'll do while running free, yeah! Problem with while running free is that while it has reach compared to right foot forward, down foot free, it has like zero track. It has not a single pixel of tracking. So Huarang, even though they gave him this all-powerful attack, he still has to think once or twice um, in terms of how do I initiate on my opponent. This is most Tekken characters, but this is not Reyna. Reyna completely upends this with Raiden. To the point where you always have to respect Reyna. If Reyna is standing over here, 
You don't sidestep, you don't really do anything. Because you can't challenge her. Paul and Brian will be whoring and will start throwing keep out. You can't do that against Reyna. She can tag you from the other side of the stage. Raiden, to whiff punish any type of keep out you try to play. So this also tells you how um, a matchup specific movement is in this game. And how you are allowed to play. And it's the same, when she's up close, she, uh, she bombards you with shit, right? So here you kind of have to respect her as well. And it actually, it reminds me a lot of Huarang actually, that uh, orange pink haired, well pink, in my fan fiction he has pink hair, he's with Jin, holding hands on the beach. But uh, he reminds me a lot of Rain actually, where Huarang up close, you have to respect him. And then you have to deal with his options with, you have to see what he's doing, and then do a clever sidestep or duck to beat him. And it's quite similar with Rain actually. It's just that Huarang, when he's standing far away from you, he doesn't completely control space and time, the way Reyna does. But it's very character specific how you cho choose to move in this game. Uh, again, in general, if a character is in heat, you can't, I, I would not recommend you to sidestep. I would get comfortable blocking, but certain characters are extremely vulnerable to sidestepping. Like Kazuya, if you just step left against Kazuya, you, you have a high degree of efficiency defensively against him by simply stepping left. You still beat a huge chunk of his move list, and he has to commit to not the best options to shut you down. But again, depends a little bit on the character you play. Certain characters like Kuma have an atrocious sidestep. Uh, Rain has a very strong sidestep. This is the last piece of advice I'm gonna give you, which is just the 101 sidestepping advice in Tekken, is that when you sidestep in Tekken, you'll step, as soon as you commit to a button, you make your hitbox gigantic. When you're sidestepping, your hitbox is small, but as soon as you press a button, your hitbox, you're, you're a fat motherfucker. You, you get super obese. I mean, the, the hitbox is invisible, but you get obese, diabetes, the conditions. Pro players look at sidestepping, and this is high level play now, I'm trying to explain to you. And this is when you want to learn, you want to learn this as early as you can in your, in your Tekken career. If you want to get really good at this game, doing reactive based gameplay as much as you can, reaction based gameplay. What I mean by this is that you commit to your sidestep because you're like, I think he's gonna do a linear poke now. You commit to your sidestep, or a sidewalk, and typically it's better to sidewalk than sidestep, due to sidestep a lot of strings in this game, including 1-2s, they realign with every hit they do. Certain strings don't realign at all, but a lot of strings will realign. So you tend to want to sidewalk, so you double tap and hold, rather than do the single sidestep, right? So you start stepping, and then you visually confirm, my opponent did indeed attack, and he whiffed, right? And then you, on reaction, on whiff, you react to the whiff with your punishment. So this is the opposite of doing sidestep. Ah, I'm pretty sure he's gonna do something, so I'm gonna commit either way. You can still do this once in a while on a read, uh, or on a float chart you find effective. Like, oh, I like doing down for one, step left, down for two, it usually works. You can't try and do that. You, you, we all have our flowcharts that we like. But you have to learn to do things on reaction. So you do not commit needlessly. Because in this game, we want to learn to not overextend. That's for lower level players. So that, that's the difference between a great defensive player and someone who's just doing flowchart defense. You know, you, you, how many players have you seen do jab, step, hop, kick? And they'll do it no matter what. No matter what you do. Oh, ho, ho, woo! Don't be that guy. Do, do what Arsan does. Check, check with 1-1. One, one, step. Even a jab whiff. And then he, he won't even do a hop kick. Dude, to stay safe, he'll punish with 1-1-2. One, one, Arsan is the definition of zero overcommitment. Just check, step. He whiffed. 1-1-2. One, one, to make sure he won't fucking whiff. He doesn't want a single chance. But Huarang's whiff jab, he recovers quickly enough to block the hop kick or the down for a two. That's the difference between like a high level player and a, and a very basic average player. Start moving, react, see, visually confirm, 
He whiffed. Take your punish. That's that's the sidestepping 101. And also because, you know, if he starts flailing that string, even if it wouldn't track you, as soon as you press your button and you get the obese uh, hitbox, diabetes box, it will realign and hit you. And this is where you see those clips on Reddit where someone does a hell sweep like this, and they step the first sweep, right? And then the second hit has this really dumb 180 tracking where it hits an opponent who's standing behind them. It's because the opponent standing behind pressed the button. And as soon as you press into someone like this, your hitbox goes obese, and it might actually extend to the other side of your opponent, to their stomach area. And you get clipped. And it looks super dumb, but that's just how Tekken hitboxes work. That's sidestepping 101 in this game. Uh, and I, I hope that helped. Suck.